Radio 4. And now to introduce the next programme, here's Nicholas Parsons. Welcome to Just a Minute. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away, once more it is my pleasure to introduce to you the four exciting and dynamic personalities who this week are going to play just a minute. We welcome back Paul Merton and Richard Murdoch, and we welcome back, who've been playing the game for quite a long while, Peter Jones and Derek Nimmo. Will you please welcome all four of them? Beside me sits Ian Messiter, the creator of the game, who not only blows his whistle when 60 seconds are up, but also keeps the score for us. And uh, what I'm going to do is ask our four panellists if they can speak, as usual, on the subject that I give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. We'll begin the show this week with Peter Jones, and who better? And Peter, the subject is poker. Will you tell us something about that in just a minute, starting now? Poker is a card game. I'm not terribly good at games, as I demonstrate uh, every week when Just um, a Minute is Richard on. Richard Murdoch has challenged. Oh, there's a very definite hesitation there. There was. He was demonstrating yeah. that he's not very good at games. At, uh, <laughs> right. And um, yes. he hesitated, and so you get a point for a correct challenge uh, for hesitation. And there are 52 seconds left, starting now. Well, there's... <laughs> <laughs> Paul Merton challenge. Hesitation? Yes, I agree, Paul. Yes, he didn't even get started. And well, so... I, you didn't give me a chance to start. <laughs> I always... I know you haven't played it very often, but I always say starting now... Yes. You actually do have to get cracking right away, because we only have Otherwise it becomes boring. You know? yeah, that's true, yes. <laughs> so, Paul Merton, you have a point for correct challenge, and you have 51 seconds on poker starting now. Uh, and Richard Murdoch challenge. Well, he didn't start it. <laughs> <laughs> We don't play as keenly as that, Richard, I'm sorry. No? <laughs> well, I, I'm just being keen, that's you're, you're terribly keen, right. Yes. I'm sorry, I can't give... Give him a bonus point, because we enjoy his challenge. Oh. But uh, Paul also gets a challenge for... A point for an incorrect challenge, and he has now 50 and a half seconds on poker starting now. A poker is a piece of metal strip which you use to poke the fire with. Um, there are... And Derek Nemo <laughs> challenge. If we're allowing errums this week, he was an errum. Yes, he did say errum, and which is hesitation, and you have got within... Oh, goodness gracious, within 16 seconds we've heard from all four members of the panel, and 44 seconds with you, Derek, on poker starting... The most now. exciting poker game I ever took part in was in Glitter Gulch in Las Vegas in the state of Nevada in the United States of America. It was at Benny Binion's famous Golden Horseshoe Club. And all the big players were there because that's where they have the international championships. Wingy Gruber, Jimmy the Greek, Pugsy Parsons sitting down <laughs> to play stud poker before this totally entranced audience with $100,000 minimum chips on the table for each of the people playing poker that day. I must say, my nerves are at my fingertips because... Uh, Richard's uh, challenge. Well, it's deviation. He's supposed to be talking about poker and he's talking about his nerves. <laughs> I think, to be quite fair, and I always try to be fair, that he was talking about this game of poker, and it made his nerves... I thought you were going to have him for deviation, because your nerves couldn't always be at your fingertips. But, um, but no, he, he was expressing the, the state of mind and he was in, and body. No, um, was he? Derek, you have one second left on poker, starting now. Poking the fire when I was a wolf. <laughs> what you could have done is had him for deviation, because I don't believe Pugsy Parsons was in that game. <laughs> And He's a very be... poor player. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right. Richard Murdoch, will you take the next round? The subject is musical instruments. Will you tell us something about that in this game starting now? There are many kinds of musical instruments. They are either blown, sucked, twanged, hit, or... or... <laughs> <laughs> Thing. I can't remember. Yeah, I know, it's difficult. <laughs> Just make something up if you can't remember it, because otherwise it becomes hesitation. So Peter Jones got in first. And we know the challenge, Peter. Hesitation, 52 hesitation, seconds on yes. musical <laughs> instruments starting now. Well, I've... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, there he got him first, Derek. Will it help? Yes. Another hesitation. Fifty seconds are left for you now, Derek. On musical instruments starting now. Musical instruments. Well, that is an interesting subject. Yes, and I was appearing with the military band of the Cold Stream Guards. They had tubers and trumpets, drums, large and small. Sometimes uh, one could hear. Uh, Peter one Jones has challenged. Hesitation. Well, it. Yes, I think I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. It was oh. just just about hesitation. I was so breathing. Peter, well, I know. <laughs> you breathed a bit too long, so I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt and 34 seconds He's for you. He's been breathing much too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that at all. Well, the audience endorsed it anyway. <laughs> So, Peter, you have 34 seconds on musical instruments starting now. I had a few lessons on the mandolin because my father went to an auction and bought one of that type of instrument at, a, at this sale. And uh, he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Richard Murdoch challenged. A little bit more hesitation. Yes, there was a little bit more hesitation there, Richard. You have another point and you have 24 seconds to tell us something more about musical instruments starting now. The other type of thing you can do with an instrument is to scrape it, such as a violin or a double bass or a cello. These are known as stringed instruments. And, of course, you do get other types of instruments in the theatre. And I am referring to the operating theatre. These are known... Uh, yes. Uh, Paul uh, Merton challenge. The repetition of theatre. Yes, um, yes, the operating yes. theatre and the other theatre. So, Paul, you've got him in six seconds and we're going to hear from you on musical instruments starting now. Drums, piano, guitar, cello, double bass, harpsichord... <laughs> kept your recitation going until the whistle went again, that extra point, and you are now in the lead, Paul, alongside Derek Nimmo and Peter Jones and Richard Murdoch are both together in second place, only one point behind. Paul, uh, will you take the next round? The subject is my pet. Will you tell us something about a pet that you have, or just my pet starting now? My pet is a cat called Zuby. This cat is a peculiarly <coughs> stupid um, Derek cat. Derek Nimmo cat. challenged. <laughs> Two cats. There were two cats, yes, and you only got one, I'm sure, so that's repetition. If the cat was a schizophrenic, would that help me in any way? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a Siamese cat, like in Twins. Yes, but in just a minute, if you repeat the word, that is repetition, and so it is a correct challenge from the other party, which was Derek Nemo. 56 seconds, Derek, on my pet, starting now. My pet is a beautiful red retriever dog that I've had since it was six months old had it trained by somebody in the part of Northamptonshire known as Oni. It is a great chum to me and, of course, a wonderful pet. But more than that, it is a personal friend with an ability <coughs> to... Uh, Paul Merton challenge. I think you should extend your social life of this... <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if this red retriever is a personal friend... <laughs> I mean, I, I, once, I, I used to correspond with a tortoise, but I didn't. <laughs> so you're having him for deviation? Deviation, yes. Because of his... Uh, well, oh, yes. Um, I think what we'll do is give you cause, um, uh, a bonus point, because we did enjoy the challenge, Paul, but uh, I think within the bounds and the rules of just a minute, Derek wasn't actually being too devious, so he keeps going with 33 seconds on my pet, starting now. His name is Rufus, named after the king of that particular appendage and when I take him with me for a run uh, in the park uh, Peter Jones has challenged the dog was named after a king's appendage yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh. is that the reason you became friends <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, I have to judge on that and decide whether well, it was deviation or not. Definitely deviation on somebody's part. <laughs> he was Whatever trying happens, it on Peter, the dog. You're going to get a bonus point for your challenge, I can tell you that right away. Um, if you can name it, if his red hair, which is why he was called Rufus, by the way, that was William II, is called an appendage or not, um, then, of course, maybe Derek wasn't actually being devious or not. <laughs> 
I think what I'm going to do in this situation is put this to the superior wisdom and judgment of oh, our I don't charming want. I'm audience. fed up with this bloody dog. It doesn't exist anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fake dog. <laughs> so much for friendship. <laughs> You're appearing on Radio 4. This poor dog's at home waiting for you. <laughs> Personal just... friend, probably whipped up a custard or something. <laughs> and now you've thrown the whole thing out of the window and given it over to Peter Jones. Right, all right, Peter. 23 seconds on my pet, starting now. My pet was a blue rabbit called Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. I would suggest that you weren't heating it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably keep it indoors. And it... <laughs> Blue chinchilla rabbit. That's right, what it was. Right. Well, keep it, save it, Peter, because Paul gets another point because we like the challenge. Peter keeps the subject and a point for an incorrect challenge, and he goes on about his blue chinchilla rabbit with um, um, uh, 20 seconds left starting now. But after a couple of years, I must say, I had to admit, it was rather boring. It didn't sort of give anything much. A rabbit is pretty, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, never challenge. Well, hesitation and repetition of rabbit. Um, which one do you want? Well, both, really. <laughs> Sometimes you give two points, you know. You give yeah. him one. I will say no. Uh, yes, I agree with you, Derek, but only one point, I'm afraid. But 11 seconds on my pet, starting now. My wife calls me my pet. I <laughs> call... uh, Paul, I know your challenge, but come on, Paul, yes. <laughs> No, I was going to say repetition of my, but of course that's, that's included in the no, subject, No, I isn't thought it? you were going to say if his, gold, if, his, if his golden retriever was his pet, how can his, he be the pet to his wife as well? No, I wasn't going to say no. that. Um, <laughs> mainly because I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> there was no logic in it. <laughs> then you're I... probably still upset about sale of the century being cancelled. So. Yeah. <laughs> Did your wife have you trained by this man in Northampton? <laughs> and did you ever turn blue? <laughs> I don't know who has the subject, but I think it's actually still uh, uh, Derek Nemo. And six seconds on my pet, starting now. Come here, my pet, she says to me. Go out and look for the doggy. I go to the lane and go <coughs> with a whistle. Um, Paul Merton challenge. Repetition of go. Yes, you were going too much. Um, uh, <laughs> Derek, so Paul got in with three seconds to go and the subject's still my pet, starting now. She used to be a kitten. That was, of course, many months ago. <laughs> Everybody scored points in that round except the chairman. Richard Murdoch is in fourth place, but only just behind Peter Jones. He's two points behind Derek Nimmo, but one point ahead of him is our present leader, Paul Merton. He got a number of points, including one for speaking. As the whistle went and Derek Nimmo begins the next round, and the subject is earrings. Mm -hmm. Will you tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now? Actually, I've never possessed any earrings, <laughs> principally because I'm rather too frightened to have a hole pierced within my lobes. I know... Uh, Richard Murdoch challenged. Uh, did you say earwigs? <laughs> <laughs> because I... You obviously have I said Derek giving them up his nose. <laughs> you obviously haven't quite woken up yet, Richard. No, no, it's... I said earrings. Oh, yes. Well, I must... I must get I'm, an earring aid. <laughs> But Derek has an incorrect challenge and therefore 50 seconds to continue with ear rings starting now. Well, the one thing is a photograph of uh, a pair of parties. And people. Peter Jones' challenge. Of a... Uh, uh, yes, that was a hesitation, hesitation, definitely, Peter. 48 seconds for you on ear rings starting now. When you're thinking of the head as a whole, I think probably... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I hesitate. know the challenge, but let's hear it, Paul, yes. I've never, ever... <laughs> thought of the head as a whole. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't don't when he does. Hole in the head. When he <laughs> does. No, it, I don't it, think a head can be a whole, Peter. I definitely as a whole. W-H-O-L-E. As a whole? Yes. But you think of the head as a whole, you said. Yes. <laughs> whole. All right, I, I will give it to you. You were trying to... For those people abroad who are not so conversant with the English language, there is a word whole, H-O-L-E, which is a, a thing that... Well, I think they're in trouble if we have to explain every word. <laughs> it does. It, on this occasion, it might. Uh, 
prevent a few letters coming in, and there's another word, W H O L E. Before listening to this programme, take an English course lasting several months. I might tell you that I do happen to know from letters I've received that in China, where the show is now listened to, they do listen to it in order to practice their English. Well, we give Paul a, a bonus point. I love the challenge. And, um, but we leave the subject with uh, Peter Jones um, and 44 seconds left on earrings starting now. If you're going to wear a ring, then the ear is the best place for it. You can put it in your nose. Uh, Richard Murdoch has challenged. It's certainly not the best place for a ring. The best place for a ring is on the finger. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Or, or the telephone. Yeah. <laughs> but not in the ear. Well, no, it's a matter of opinion, and if Peter thinks it is the best place, he's entitled to that opinion. So Peter Jones still has the subject, because I don't think he was actually deviating within the rules of just a minute, and he has 39 seconds on earrings starting now. I've seen them hanging from people's nostrils, and I never feel... Uh, Paul Merton challenged. You wouldn't have seen an earring hanging from somebody's nostril, because then it would be a nose ring. <laughs> no, well, he might have I had an earring in his rings. nostril. You never know. I mean, people can do funny things with earrings. And also, he did say before about rings. He'd established it was rings he was talking about. Uh, isn't the subject on the card earrings? The matter of interest is such a long time ago. <laughs> but he didn't challenge Earrings are rings worn in the ear, whether you're in China or any other bloody place. <laughs> <laughs> Now, look, let's not bring China into this. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. We've had a lot of fun by bringing China into it. Um, well, it's so, deviation. Uh, no, no, I, it nose, wasn't uh, deviation. He had the ring in his nose, and it could have been any kind of ring. And he wasn't deviating with the rules of just a minute. So 35 seconds, still with you, Peter Jones, on earrings starting now. I really haven't got a great deal to say. Paul <laughs> <laughs> Merton challenge. Once again, I find myself leaping to the rescue. <laughs> uh, so what is your challenge? Um, an inability... <laughs> Hesitation. <laughs> Uh, Peter Jones, you've just challenged yourself. You have a correct challenge. Another point to you. Paul. Um, and it was correct because it was hesitation. Paul Merton now has a subject of earrings. 33 seconds left, starting now. It is fashionable now for men to wear earrings as well as women. Uh, I know... Uh, uh, there, no hesitation. there was a hesitation. He erred there. And 27 seconds for you on earrings, Derek, starting and now. And the most beautiful pair of earrings I've ever seen worn on a man, but worn by old Pugsy uh, Barton. Richard Murdoch. Yeah, he, 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 a couple of warns. There were two warns, yes, yes so two that is warns. repetition. 22 seconds for you, um, Richard, on earrings, starting now. I have never worn earrings because they don't really become a man. They more become a lady. And, and Paul Merton challenge. A uh, repetition yeah. of become. Yes, yes. you will be too becoming there, Richard, I'm sorry. <laughs> And uh, Paul's got in with the earrings again, 17 seconds starting now. If somebody was to fire a pistol near your ear, then your ear would definitely... <laughs> Uh, well, why do you challenge, Richard? Well, I've two ears, then. Yes, but ears on the card. Ear rings. And ear rings... No, hyphenated it's word. hyphenated, no, isn't it? It's hyphenated, yes. Mm, so if you haven't got the rings, then it's, it's a valid challenge. Yeah. Right. I will turn to Ear Messeter, because as it's yes. hyphenated, I would have thought he could use the word ear again. <laughs> Can no, not like that. He cannot. He's got to say earrings. Yes, the word ear is repetition. How nice it. to hear from you in just a minute, dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's only the second time in 22 years I've actually asked you to adjudicate, isn't it? I didn't know I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you cannot use the word ear, and therefore that was repetition. Uh, Richard Murdoch has a correct challenge, and he has 12 seconds on earrings starting now. Earrings are very beautiful things. You buy them in jewellers. I've seen some in Bond Street, and they are very, very... Um, <laughs> Oh, Merton, yes. Yes. Repetition of very. Repetition yes. of very, yes. He was overemphasizing them, which you can't do in just a minute. Five seconds left on earrings, Paul, starting now. Earrings can be made of different kinds of material. They can be made... And they, Richard Murdoch got in. Not quite sure why I did that. <laughs> because he repeated, they can be. Yes, that was it, yes. yes. <laughs> I actually heard him. You're sitting yes, beside yes, him. I, I knew there was but something it, there, and went, I, like I couldn't put my finger on it for the moment. <laughs> so you have one second to tell us something about earrings, Richard, starting now. The last time and I was in Bond Street... Street I'm not I... quite sure why I've challenged. Perhaps you could come <laughs> up with some reason. I'd like to give you two bonus points for that one, Paul, because we did like the challenge, but you did interrupt, because uh, it wasn't a correct challenge. Richard Murdoch gets another point, and he has half a second on earrings, starting now. I was talking... Oh.
Because it's probably going to be one of the highest scoring games of just a minute ever recorded. And Peter, your turn to begin. The subject is my swimsuit. Will you tell us something about that? <laughs> Why they should laugh at the idea of you in a swimsuit, Peter? <laughs> my swimsuit with you, Peter, starting now. Swimsuit is a quaint old-fashioned word. It came just after... Uh, Richard Murdoch challenged. Oh, I thought it was two words, swim and suit. <laughs> well, what, what, what if you, if you thought it was, <laughs> even if you thought it was two words, what is your challenge? Well, he said it was a word. <laughs> oh, I see. Thank you very much, Richard. Yes, um, <laughs> trying extremely hard, but um, it's hyphenated. Is it? it isn't. It's all one word. Oh, is it? No, 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 no. Swimsuit is all one word nowadays. It used to be hyphenated years ago, but now the Oxford English Dictionary gives it as one word. But if it's a bikini, it must be two words. Yes, it's word. <laughs> Yeah. A bikini is one word, but it's two pieces. Yes. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't know what they're going to make of this in China. <laughs> Set them back as a world power, I should think. <laughs> they're learning English from this. Uh, Peter, an incorrect challenge, so you still have my swimsuit. I'm sorry. <laughs> You don't have my swimsuit. You have the subject of my swimsuit. 57 seconds, starting now. When I was a small boy away at school, we used to run down to the swimming pool and dive in in our birthday suits. And I always liked that best. It was so invigorating when it was cold and dark in the early morning. And these little boys with their little cashew nuts... <laughs> What you said, Peter, but it sounded quite filthy. Oh, I... <laughs> Derek Nimmo yeah, challenge. Yeah, What's a repetition of little and also... <laughs> <laughs> ..an interest of public decency. <laughs> seeing, <laughs> seeing how cold it was, I'm not surprised it was the... <laughs> um, Derek, you are right. Oh, dear, we haven't laughed so much on just a minute for a long time. <laughs> so you'll get going again, actually. Uh, Derek, it was a correct challenge, a re repetition of little 42 seconds on my swimsuit starting now. Nicholas Parsons' swimsuit is not a pretty thing to behold. <laughs> uh, Paul Merton challenge. The subject is my swimsuit. Well, what did you say the subject was, Nicholas? I said my swimsuit. If it's your swimsuit. <laughs> I'm afraid he's perfectly correct um, <laughs> there because you can say it. If I was to say the subject is my swimsuit, then it would have been a correct challenge, Paul. Incorrect challenge. Another point to Derek Nimmo. 37 seconds are left on the subject of my swimsuit starting now. He worked in the Docklands in the Clyde, and that was when he first wore a swimsuit. Before that, he used to swim in the Buff, and frightfully chilly it wasn't that bottle of Scotland, too, I can tell you. More than your blue chinchillas there, I can tell you. <laughs> but Nicholas Parsons now has a success. Uh, Paul Merton has challenged. Repetition of Nicholas Parsons. Yes. <laughs> and some people cannot have a repetition. <laughs> I thought I'd get the joke in before anybody else did. <laughs> <coughs> and Paul Merton has another point, and he has the subject of my swimsuit. 22 seconds are left, starting now. My swimsuit is made of pure new wool, which is a little bit inconvenient when I go down to the swimming baths because it shrinks very quickly. When it falls down to the bottom of my ankle, I get out of the water and go back... <coughs> Uh, doing Nimbo challenge. Well, if it's falling at the bottom of his ankle, I don't think it's shrinking, it's expanding. <laughs> and a woolen... I, my mother used to knit me woolen swimsuits, and they always used to get very, very droopy and fall right... I don't believe that it would shrink in the water. So it's, it's a deviation. terribly interesting challenge, actually, because if it shrunk, it would grip tighter rather than drop mm. off. So, Derek, well, listen, and there are two seconds for you on the subject, my swimsuit. My on. swimsuit is absolutely <laughs> glorious. <laughs> Thank you.
So everybody's scoring a lot of points in this particular game, and it's very close. Derek Nimmer and Peter Jones, who played the game many times, are equal in second place, just ahead of Richard Murdoch. But out in the lead, three points ahead of the other two, is still our guest, Paul Merton. And Richard, your turn to begin. The subject is digs. Subject you can take many ways. Will you talk on it starting now? The digs that I am most conversant with are those theatrical ones. I've stayed in practically every house in Acker Street, Manchester, and one day the landlady said to me, Look at Mr. Nice Mr. George Roby put in this um, book. Derek Nimmo Challenge. That is from my side. Yes. Yes. Oh, Mice, yeah. I said, did I? I have to be fair. He yes. did press his buzzer. He did challenge. Uh, we, I don't let you go on, Richard, because I enjoyed it. But um, he has a great challenge, and there are 46 seconds, for Derek, to tell us something about digs starting now. And those old-fashioned digs always used to have notices within them saying such things as there is a chamber pot beneath the bed. If you use it during the night, don't put it back underneath again because it's a rust. Uh, Peter Jones a challenge. Uh, under the bed, he yes. mentioned before. Oh, beneath, I Oh, beneath, did you? Oh, well, sorry. I <laughs> feel such a fool. <laughs> beneath and underneath, yes. yes. So there are 32 seconds for Derek to continue on digs starting now. It will rust the springs. Those are the things one remembers greatly from one's early days in the theatrical profession. I remember my mother hanging to me. I think re remembered to Paul Merton to me. You said remembered before. So that's right, I was hoping you'd find yes, that. Yes, that's right. I think that's a little sort of, you know, a gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you magnanimous yes, I thought it was condescending fellow. The, um, uh, Paul Merton had a correct challenge for repetition of remember. 19 seconds on digs with you, Paul, starting now. I remember staying in digs in 1936 when I was part of a double act called Merton and Balloon. I, uh, Derek Nimmo well, challenge. deviation. He obviously wasn't alive in 1936. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mind can play tricks with you. I said I remember being in... I don't think you were part of a double act in 1936, but that wasn't actually Derek's challenge. Uh, Merton and Baloo. <laughs> we didn't get much work. Um, I... <laughs> Derek, I think, I think I've got to be fair and say, yes, that was a correct challenge. So, Derek, you take over the subject of digs, and there are 11 seconds left, starting now. The first dig that I took place on was on the island of Cyprus near Salamis. And Peter Jones, a challenge. Uh, deviation. Why? The first digs I took place on, he said, didn't he? <laughs> That's deviation of grammar, no, English. No, 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 I'm talking about digs in an archaeological sense. I took place on? Yeah, they took place, place on. Is, is, <laughs> we, we've got to remember these sense. people in China who are listening, you know. <laughs> yeah. No way is that good. Well, I'm trying to give it a speed up. I was sort of flagging. I know. Well, all right, Derek. I'll take the subject away from you and we'll get the thing going again. And uh, <laughs> Peter Jones has a correct challenge. Eight seconds left on digs, starting now. I remember this label hanging on the chain in the lavatory and it said, Pull slowly and hold down. And I never knew for how long he was supposed to hold it down. <laughs> So Peter Jones brought that end of that, that round to an end with a flourish, gained the point for speaking as the whistle went. He's also brought the show to an end because we have no more time to play. Just a minute. Only remains for me to give you the final score. Richard Murdoch, who did extraordinarily well and gave a tremendous value as always, came in fourth place, a few points behind Peter Jones, who gave his usual tremendous value. He was one point behind Derek Nimmo, but one point ahead of them was this week's winner, Paul Merton. you have enjoyed listening to this edition of Just a Minute. It's obvious that we've all thoroughly enjoyed playing it. It only remains for me to say on behalf of the four competitors in the game, which is uh, Paul Merton and Richard Murdoch and Derek Nemo and Peter Jones and uh, the creator of the game, Ian Mesto, sits beside me and has spoken for the first time in a very long time. And also our producer, Edward Taylor, and myself, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you for tuning in from all of us here. Goodbye. Goodbye.